What if I told you that Elon Musk just shocked NASA by revealing a critical flaw in SpaceX's moon landing plan? With just two years until Artemis III, Starship faces a deadly problem. How do you safely land a 400-foot rocket on the lunar surface without landing legs? While SpaceX perfected the chopstick catch system on Earth, the moon has no tower to catch Starship. This forces a dramatic design choice that could make or break humanity's return to the moon. Let's dive right in. To understand why this is such a crisis, let's look at the numbers. Starship weighs over 1,400 tons when fully fueled. That's equivalent to 350 cars stacked on top of each other, attempting to land gently on a surface with zero atmosphere to help slow it down. For comparison, the Apollo Lunar Module weighed just 15 tons. Starship is 93 times heavier. Imagine the difference between parking a bicycle versus landing a freight train with pinpoint accuracy. This weight difference isn't just a scaling problem. It's a fundamental physics challenge. The Apollo LM had four legs specifically engineered for its 15-ton mass. For Starship's 1,400 tons, those legs would need to be exponentially stronger, yet remain light enough for space travel. What makes this even more concerning is the political pressure. While NASA publicly supports SpaceX's timeline, former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine recently questioned whether this ambitious goal is realistic. When former NASA leadership starts expressing doubts about their own program, that's a red flag. This brings us to something SpaceX doesn't want you to notice. New satellite imagery from their McGregor, Texas facility, shows mysterious construction projects appearing almost overnight. Massive tower structures that don't match any known Starship testing equipment. What's SpaceX building in secret? Industry sources suggest these could be test rigs for lunar landing systems. But here's what's fascinating. If these towers are for testing landing legs, it means SpaceX is quietly abandoning their no-legs-needed philosophy. Meanwhile, back at Starbase, observers have spotted unusual components. Nose cones with different configurations, airlock systems, and interior layouts that don't match the standard Starship we've been seeing. These parts belong to something called the Human Landing System, HLS, a specialized version of Starship designed exclusively for moon missions. This evidence points to a critical decision SpaceX must make, and every option carries catastrophic risks. NASA's Artemis contract requires SpaceX to choose between two fundamentally different approaches, each with the potential to doom the entire mission. The most straightforward approach involves permanent landing legs attached to Starship HLS. These legs would remain extended throughout the entire mission, combined with solar panels along the vehicle's body. The appeal is obvious. Fewer moving parts mean fewer potential failures. But the engineering reality is brutal. Those legs must support 1,400 tons on uneven lunar terrain while adding minimal weight to the spacecraft. According to SpaceX's internal calculations, fixed legs would add at least 20 tons to Starship's total mass. In space exploration, 20 tons isn't just weight. It's 20 tons less life support, scientific equipment, or emergency supplies for astronauts. That reduction could mean the difference between mission success and crew survival. The alternative involves deployable legs similar to Falcon 9's system, but scaled up dramatically. These legs would fold during flight and deploy only for lunar landing, maintaining Starship's aerodynamic profile and reducing mass penalties. SpaceX has proven this concept works on Falcon 9, which successfully deploys legs for every Earth landing. But Falcon 9 weighs 70 tons at landing. Starship weighs 20 times more. The engineering challenge is like scaling up a bicycle brake system to stop a runaway freight train. The terrifying risk? If those legs fail to deploy on the moon, astronauts would be trapped in lunar orbit with no way to land. Mission over, crew potentially lost. The alternative involves deployable legs similar to Falcon 9's system, but scaled up dramatically. These legs would fold during flight and deploy only for lunar landing, maintaining Starship's aerodynamic profile and reducing mass penalties. SpaceX has proven this concept works on Falcon 9, which successfully deploys legs for every Earth landing. But Falcon 9 weighs 70 tons at landing. Starship weighs 20 times more. 
The engineering challenge is like scaling up a bicycle brake system to stop a runaway freight train. The terrifying risk? If those legs fail to deploy on the moon, astronauts would be trapped in lunar orbit with no way to land. Mission over, crew potentially lost. But landing legs represent just one piece of a much larger puzzle that's equally dangerous. Before Starship even attempts to land on the moon, it must solve an unprecedented refueling challenge that has never been attempted at this scale. Every lunar mission requires Starship to be completely refueled in Earth orbit using approximately 10 separate tanker flights. Think about what this means. 10 massive spacecraft, each weighing 1,400 tons, must successfully dock with the main Starship while traveling at 17,500 miles per hour around Earth. Each docking maneuver is like trying to connect two 40-story buildings in perfect motion. One mistake destroys both vehicles. With crew aboard the main Starship, any refueling accident becomes a potential death sentence. Elon Musk has claimed this process will be easier than docking Dragon with the International Space Station. But Dragon weighs 13 tons. Starship weighs 100 times more. The physics, precision requirements, and margin for error are completely different. The timeline makes this even more challenging. All 10 tanker flights must launch within a narrow window after the main Starship reaches orbit. Cryogenic fuels can't be stored indefinitely in space. They boil off rapidly. Any delay in the tanker sequence could leave astronauts stranded. This is where SpaceX might shock the entire space industry. Internal patents and engineering documents suggest they're secretly developing an entirely different approach. Horizontal lunar landing. Instead of landing Starship vertically like a traditional rocket, this method would have Starship land on its side, similar to how the space shuttle touched down, but without a runway. The engineering requirements are mind-bending. Starship would need to transition from vertical flight to horizontal orientation during descent, using a precise combination of main engines and smaller thrusters. The vehicle would essentially perform a controlled crash that becomes a gentle touchdown. Why consider such a complex maneuver? Horizontal landing eliminates the need for tall, heavy landing legs while providing much better stability on uneven lunar terrain. Instead of balancing a 400-foot tower on four points, Starship would rest along its entire length like a fallen tree. But the technical challenges are enormous. The entire engine configuration would need redesigning. Heat shields would require repositioning. The fuel distribution system would need to function in horizontal orientation. It's essentially building a completely different spacecraft. These radical solutions face an unforgiving deadline that grows more impossible every month. NASA's contract requires SpaceX to deliver two complete HLS prototypes by late 2026, one for unmanned testing and one for the actual Artemis III mission carrying astronauts. That's barely 15 months to solve engineering problems that have never been solved before. Consider what SpaceX must accomplish in this time frame. First, they must finalize whether to use fixed legs, retractable legs, or horizontal landing. Each choice requires completely different engineering approaches, manufacturing processes, and testing protocols. There's no time to test all three options. Second, they must perfect orbital refueling through dozens of test flights. Current Starship flights are still working on basic operations like engine reliability, and controlled landing. They haven't even begun testing fuel transfer between vehicles. Third, they must coordinate perfectly with NASA's Orion spacecraft, which will carry astronauts from Earth to lunar orbit before transferring them to Starship. Both systems must work flawlessly together. Any incompatibility means mission failure. The current state of Starship testing reveals how far behind schedule they truly are. The recent Flight 10 was celebrated as a breakthrough because it successfully completed a basic flight profile. But that's elementary compared to lunar mission requirements. Behind the headlines, SpaceX is frantically building the industrial capacity needed for lunar missions. And the scale is staggering. The company needs multiple launch pads capable of supporting rapid-fire tanker launches, fuel production facilities generating massive quantities of liquid oxygen and methane, and manufacturing lines producing spacecraft faster than ever attempted. Starbase's Pad 2 is nearing completion, but SpaceX needs at least four operational pads to support the launch frequency required for lunar missions. Each pad requires flame trenches, advanced fueling systems, and support towers, infrastructure projects that normally take years to complete. 
The air separation unit under construction will produce the cryogenic fuels needed for dozens of launches in quick succession. But this facility isn't operational yet, and without it, the entire lunar program collapses from lack of propellant. Perhaps most critically, SpaceX must transition from building version 2 Starships to version 3 by year's end. Version 2 simply cannot perform lunar missions. It lacks the necessary fuel capacity and system redundancies. But version 4, which might be capable, won't be ready until 2027, after the Artemis deadline. This creates a narrow window where only version 3 can potentially meet NASA's requirements. If that transition fails or delays, Artemis 3 becomes impossible. The mounting technical challenges are creating a political crisis that extends far beyond SpaceX. The Artemis program has become a symbol of American technological leadership, with billions in taxpayer funding and national prestige at stake. Congressional oversight committees are already asking pointed questions about SpaceX's timeline and backup plans. Some legislators are quietly exploring alternatives that don't rely on Starship, but switching systems at this stage would delay lunar missions by at least five years, potentially giving China permanent space superiority. The political pressure is intensifying because failure carries consequences beyond delayed exploration. America's credibility in international space partnerships, defense technology leadership, and scientific innovation all depend on Artemis success. SpaceX understands these stakes. They're not just racing against technical deadlines or Chinese competition. They're racing against political patience running out. Every month of delay increases the risk that Congress might redirect funding or NASA might choose a different contractor. Despite these overwhelming challenges, SpaceX possesses one crucial advantage that their critics consistently underestimate. They've revolutionized seemingly impossible technologies before. When SpaceX proposed landing and reusing rockets, aerospace experts declared it technically unfeasible and economically pointless. Today, Falcon 9 has successfully landed over 200 times, making SpaceX the world's most active launch provider. The Dragon spacecraft has completed dozens of flawless docking maneuvers with the International Space Station, proving SpaceX can master precision space operations. Their manufacturing capabilities have achieved production rates that traditional aerospace companies considered impossible. Gwynne Shotwell, SpaceX's president and chief operating officer, recently reaffirmed confidence in meeting the Artemis timeline. Her track record suggests this isn't empty corporate optimism. She's never publicly committed to a timeline that SpaceX ultimately failed to meet. The company's iterative testing approach, while sometimes appearing chaotic, allows rapid problem-solving and design improvements. Each Starship flight test, successful or not, provides data that accelerates development faster than traditional aerospace methods. The next 12 months will determine whether SpaceX can deliver on humanity's most ambitious space mission in over 50 years. They must reveal their final HLS design, begin full-scale prototype testing, demonstrate orbital refueling, and prove their chosen landing system works. Every month of delay makes the 2027 deadline less achievable and increases the risk that China reaches the moon first. The engineering challenges are immense. The political pressure is mounting and the margin for error is virtually zero. But if SpaceX succeeds, they won't just return humans to the moon. They'll establish the foundation for permanent lunar bases, Mars missions, and humanity's expansion throughout the solar system. The question isn't whether these challenges are difficult. They're the most complex engineering problems ever attempted. The question is whether SpaceX can solve them fast enough to beat the clock, beat China, and make history. This is exactly why Musk's revelation about the landing problem isn't actually a flaw. It's SpaceX finally admitting what engineers knew all along. You can't land a 400-foot rocket on the moon without legs, and pretending otherwise was the real fatal flaw. What this means is that SpaceX is pivoting from impossible physics to actual engineering solutions. Whether they choose retractable legs, horizontal landing, or some hybrid approach, they're finally dealing with reality instead of science fiction. This shift connects to something much bigger than just getting back to the moon. Every solution SpaceX develops for lunar landing, advanced leg systems, precision fuel transfer, horizontal touchdown techniques, becomes the foundation for Mars missions and permanent space settlements. 
We're not just watching America race China to the moon. We're witnessing the birth of technologies that will define human spaceflight for the next century. And this is just the beginning. The next six months will reveal SpaceX's final design choices. By mid-2026, we'll see the first HLS prototypes in action. The orbital refueling demonstration starting next year will either prove SpaceX can deliver on their promises or expose fundamental flaws in their approach. How do you think SpaceX should solve the landing challenge? Traditional legs for reliability or horizontal landing for innovation? Will they meet the 2027 deadline? Or should NASA have backup plans ready? This is Space Hub, and we dive deep into the engineering realities behind space breakthroughs. If you want more analysis that cuts through the hype to show you what's really happening, hit subscribe. For the latest developments in the new space race, you know where to find us. The moon is just 240,000 miles away, but the engineering challenges to get there safely might as well be light years. Yet somehow that impossible distance is exactly what makes the human spirit reach further than ever before. What if China's lunar ambitions just became irrelevant overnight? While Beijing races against time to land Taikonauts on the moon, SpaceX has been secretly perfecting a cryogenic refueling breakthrough that could make every other space program obsolete. The shocking truth? SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell isn't worried about the impossible orbital fuel transfer that experts said would take decades to master. Why? Because they might have already solved it. Let's dive right in. Here's what happened at the World Space Business Week conference that no one saw coming. SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell stood before industry leaders and casually dropped a bombshell that should terrify every competing space agency on Earth. That is really the experiment. That is what you'll see from us trying next year, she said about orbital refueling tests. But here's the kicker. She wasn't talking like someone about to attempt the impossible. She spoke with the confidence of someone who already knows the answer. This brings us to a crucial question. What does SpaceX know that they're not telling us? Every spacecraft ever launched operates under one brutal limitation. You can only go as far as your fuel tank allows. Once you burn through your propellant, mission over. This iron law has kept humanity trapped near Earth for over six decades. China's space program? Still bound by these constraints, their most powerful rockets struggle to deliver meaningful payloads beyond Earth orbit, let alone bring anything back. Meanwhile, SpaceX is quietly building something that makes these limitations